Hi ladies, welcome back. We're here to talk about week 13 of your pregnancy and week 13 symbolizes, well it is, your second, rooster, barley, your second trimester of pregnancy. So one down, two to go. Now during our second trimester, for the lucky ones of us, we have to talk about this first because it's very important. A lot of women feel some sort of reprieve from some of the nastier symptoms that they were feeling before. This is because our hormones are really starting to balance out. And I like to think about rooster. I like to think of it as our body's getting used to being pregnant because let's be honest, unless we've been pregnant a number of times before or quite often, so we've had a number of babies and our body's quite used to it, it's something new. Our body has to get used to all of those hormones. So for the lucky ones of us, there may be some reprieve. And for the other ones of us, ladies, your journey is individual. You might still have some of that nausea and that fatigue. Now, by week 13, your baby, I love these analogies, is the size of a pea pod. Okay, and there's a few really important things that are happening. Your placenta is growing quite substantially, which is really amazing because your placenta is what's going to help that rooster feed your baby throughout the next few months of your pregnancy. Also, the intestines are starting to get pushed down to where they need to be, and your little baby's bones in its arms and limbs are starting to develop into proper bone, so it can actually move or swim around inside of your uterus quite well. Now, it's during this week that a number of women start to feel little pops or butterfly flutters in their belly, so just take notice. Some women don't feel them for weeks and weeks later, but I know it was around this time and the next week that I started to feel these pops in my belly and I actually mistook them for wind or gas and I went, oh, what was that? Do I need to go to the toilet? And what it was was my baby actually moving around. So for those of you that experience that around this week, that can be really, really exciting and a lovely time to bond with your baby. Now, throughout this week, you may still have nausea, you may still have sore boobs, but some women that's going to start going away. For some women, they're actually going to have heightened energy because our hormones are starting to level out. And you might start feeling a little bit like a normal human again. We feel some ease in our second trimester. Some women may still feel constipated, so make sure you keep hydrated and you eat the right foods for that. Now, the other thing that might happen is around week 13, 14, that those visible veins become quite prominent. I actually felt like a walking road map with my first pregnancy. It's just because of the higher blood flow in your body. Ladies, be proud, and it really doesn't last that long, okay? But it's amazing, you might see those blue crisscrosses across here and across your abdomen. Now, some of the other things just to take note of this week is week 13, sometimes our leucorrhea or leucorrhea can be produced a little bit more. So by week 13, it may become a little bit milky in color and it may have a mild smell. Just carry around some panty liners or some pads in case you need them. And the other thing that might start happening this week, and this is amazing, and this is really important to talk about, especially if you're not a farmer's daughter and you don't know what this is, but you may notice that there is a clear substance being secreted from your breasts. This is called colostrum. Now, even though I was a farmer's daughter, I didn't realize with my first pregnancy that your milk actually doesn't come down until about three or four days after delivering your baby. What your breasts actually produce is this clear substance called colostrum. And this is an amazing nutrient rich substance that gives your baby everything it needs to get the best start in life. Now for women who can't breastfeed, it's perfectly okay. There is a product that they produce that is very similar, exactly the same as colostrum that gives your baby the best start. But for those of you that might need to go out and buy some breast pads because your breasts are leaking, thank your body, it's fine, it's amazing, it's just producing colostrum. Now some things that you might like to consider doing this week is schedule your first pregnancy workout. It's a really good idea to get hold of a personal trainer or a professional in this area. For those of you that still have some nasty symptoms or some conditions or haven't been very active before, it may be that you just go for a gentle work, walk every day. For some other people who are more active, you may like to keep up your gym routine, but you may need to alter it for a, a little bit, okay? Until you've had your baby and a little bit after in some cases. Now, I still umpired and played sport up until about 36 weeks. That was my choice, but I did have to take things a little bit slower. And as an example, I couldn't do sit-ups because let's face it, it's really, 
It's really hard to do sit-ups with a giant beach ball, like a concrete beach ball in front of you. Some other things that you might like to start doing is make sure you eat plenty of fruit, plenty of vegetables, plenty of high fiber. Make sure you carry that water bottle around with you. This isn't only important to your health, but it's also going to ease constipation for those women who have constipation. Now, some other things that you might like to do is schedule your IC baby appointment or ultrasound. So you can actually see your baby really clearly this week. It's still got quite a large head, but it's an amazing time to bond with your baby. For those of you that have a partner, consider taking your partner in as well because it's a lovely time for them to bond with them. And for those of us that don't have our partner, Partner, or we want someone else to be a part of our support network, week 13, our second trimester, is a really good time to start thinking about who is your birthing network? Who is your birthing support partner? So some women like to have their partner or a best friend or a parent or someone else in the delivery room. Some women like to have no one in the delivery room. Some people like to make it a whole family affair. Any of that is absolutely perfectly fine, but start considering it. It's also nice just to have a support network to talk through about the exciting times and some of the, you know, scarier times or the concerns that you have. Now, another thing that happens around week 13, especially if you have that ultrasound, is you might start feeling a little bit anxious about the type of parent that you're going to be. And if you can provide your baby with everything that you want to. Literally during my first pregnancy, I was really concerned about how much love I had within me and if I was going to be able to love my baby enough. I, I wasn't sure if I was ready for it. And then with my second pregnancy, my biggest concern was whether I had enough love in me to love two of them, okay? All of these are completely normal, but make sure you've got a support network to talk those things through. And of course, we are part of your support network here at Ready, Set, Mum. So make sure you just drop us a line after this video, share your journey with us, tell us what you want us to discuss here with you at Ready, Set, Mum. We're really honored to be with you on this journey, ladies, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you next week for week 14 of your pregnancy, nearing on halfway, not quite, but you're doing a fantastic job and we will see you next week, ladies. I'm hiding from my kids, but before you go, do you love this video? And did you want more great pregnancy information delivered directly to you? If so, make sure you just drop by and subscribe to Ready, Set, Mum using the links below. Good luck.